Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to do some rebel canning in a real life situation. We've got dishes to wash, kids to keep track of, and all sorts of things going on in your life, but it shouldn't stop you from canning. So I'm going to give you a good view of everything that goes into some canning for me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So here I am picking out my berries from the freezer. I got these berries at the food pantry, um, big bags of um, mountain blueberries, and I just kept them in the freezer because I wasn't sure what to do with them at the time, but now I've got the spoons to do it, um, <laughs> both dishes and mental spoons. And I've got my sugar. It's not quite a full bag, but close enough, as you can see. I've still got cleaning up to do that I'm going to be doing while I'm doing my canning. Your home probably looks a lot like mine. Um, things that just get shuffled around and you make do with what you have. And there is no problem with that. So I'm putting things away from lunch and getting things ready to can all at the same time. Don't let this deter you. Get yourself some coffee and have fun with it. Well, as much fun as cleaning up the stove can be. Here I'm grabbing out a nice big measuring cup because I'm not exactly sure how many uh, cups of berries I have frozen there. So I'm just going to measure them out. And uh, But first, coffee. Always, but first, coffee. So, But we're going to measure out the blueberries to see um, what I need to do to tailor the recipe to uh, make sure that I use the right amount of sugar um, to get a jam that'll set up at least mostly. So I've got about four cups here. And then another four cups or so. And now my kiddos are starting to spaz out in the background, but I gotta finish measuring this out before I lose track. So, four cups. And about two cups. So that brings the total up to about. 14 cups. Now I'm getting down a canning book. I do use the Ball Blue Book of Canning for a lot of my references, just as a good starting place. Look in the index to find what you're canning and find the thing that's the closest uh, recipe that you'd like to make. I'm looking for just general berry jams, just so I can get the ratio of sugar to berries pretty close to where I want it. And so I'll just reference this and it'll say nine cups of berries to six cups of sugar. So I'll do a little bit of math and uh, figure that out. I ended up using the whole entire bag of sugar, which was almost four pounds minus a little bit that I had scooped out for another project before. Go ahead and turn it on to not quite high, but medium high. Get it cooking and uh, get a little swig of liquid energy. Now we get to dump in 
all the sugar. Yeah, it's a lot of sugar. <laughs> it makes you think about what you're eating in the winter because you think back and you're like, oh, wow, you know, it's not just blueberries. There's a whole lot of sugar in there, too. I don't think I can count this as a fruit. <laughs> I think I should count it as a dessert, but it helps put your mind into the right perspective in eating, I really think, as I sip on my vanilla latte over there on the side, of course. Go ahead and mix it all up well so that the sugar and the blueberries are well combined. You don't want a whole bunch of sugar on the bottom because it'll burn. And you also don't want it all just on the top because then when you stir the sugar into the hot liquid, it'll bubble up really bad. So go ahead and stir it now if you can, if your berries are individually frozen enough or if they're fresh. Cleaning in front of you seems to happen a lot more than cleaning behind you. So I'm just clearing off a nice enough spot for me to lay out my jars and anything else that I need while I'm doing my kitchen projects today. So you're going to rapidly boil the berries and sugar together and keep it stirring so it doesn't burn. What you want to do is take the temperature of this concoction and hopefully it reaches 220 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the uh, gelling point. At that point, you can turn it off. Here's my bit of Rebel Canning today. I'm trying out Dollar Tree lids. Let's just see how they work, because if I can get a pack of 10 lids for $1.25, I'm absolutely going to do that. Well, $1.25 plus tax, I guess, now. Time to pull out the pint jars and check that none of them have nicks and chips on the top, that they're all clean, and that they're going to work perfectly for our blueberry preserves. If you want to have a bit of fun, keep track of the time that's on my stove or microwave as I'm showing you this video. And you can see it's taking me a lot longer than this video would have you think. And that's because of my constant interruptions of the loves of my life, my children and my loving husband. They're not really an interruption. They're just the best part of my day and the canning is more of an interruption. So. I'm turning the heat back on because I had to turn it off while I washed out my canning pot because life happens and my canning pot was not clean to begin with. But here I am going to uh, set up my canning rack, which is basically just seven rings that I have that are arranged in like a little flower pattern. And I just balance my jars on that. So while the blueberries are heating back up closer to that gelling point, I'm going to uh, fill up my water bath canner with nice hot water from my tap. And uh, you definitely want to use the same temperature water as what you're putting in there, with the food that you're putting in there, because otherwise your jars will crack. I'm going to load these jars with a good combo of liquid and berries to one quarter inch headspace. Headspace is the space from the very top of the edge of the jar down to your food. While I'm doing this, my husband was chatting with me about work and his day and his plans, and we got to have just some quiet time while I filled up jars and 
enjoyed each other's peaceful company. So it's pretty nice and you can see the mess I am making. It's not always perfectly clean, especially when dealing with berries. Perfect for six jars. This is came out perfect. Like like perfect. Now here you can see I'm wiping the rims of my glass jars with a damp paper towel to make sure that I don't have anything sticky coming in between the jars and the lids. A rare sighting. Me actually cleaning up a little bit as I go. Now let's see how these fit on these jars. As I'm setting them on there, they seem to fit just fine. They're not overhanging too much or too little. And since they're brand new, I didn't have to check how good the rubber still was. So that was kind of fun for my rubble canning self. Make sure they're centered. Oh, drop it a ring. Life happens. Make sure it's centered again. Try again. Try again. And uh, get that ring on there finger tight. Just like that. And then we'll get the rest on there and we'll get them into the canner. Oh, she liked the applesauce that I, um, I, I gave her an applesauce and she wants more. I don't know. Would you like some apple? I'm using my canning tongs here for the video, but usually I just throw them in with my hands. I'm not worried about burning myself. And there goes one. Fell down. Let's go save it. Nope. Tongs aren't working. In with the hands. Oh, there goes the other one. All right. Can't be any worse than that, right? Oh, wait. My battery died. Now we're going to measure um, at least an inch of water from the tops of the lid to the tops of the water. And I needed a little bit more, so... I went and got another quart of that hot water and I just measure it with my fingers. Um, one knuckle is one inch. So it was a knuckle and a half. So I was good to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the lid for this and pop it on. And you can see it's already turned on pretty high and I'll just going to wait for it to start boiling. Once it starts boiling, we'll set the timer for 15 minutes and let it go. I decided to multitask and make some all-purpose honey balm there on the left. And when the timer goes off, you just turn off the burner and I like to loosen the lid a little bit, let it start to cool down a little bit more quickly. While I'm here, I'm going to stir my concoction. My Try and get the beeswax to melt. Put the lid back on and wait. All right. The hot water bath is cooled enough that I can safely remove the jars without them going crazy and volcanoing. Okay. All that clean space that I had. Now I've got a big batch of bread and all sorts of things going on. But. Let's go ahead and put our jars here on a cloth. That kind of protects them from cooling down too quickly. And I like to put them kind of close together so it also protects them from cooling down too quickly. And then you'll see toward the end here, I also drape another towel over top, which again, keeps it from cooling down too quickly. I want them to have good seals, not false seals. So. That's just what I do.
It's just the way that I practice things here at my little homestead. Pouring my all-purpose honey balm into containers to sell or to keep. And I'm also going to be baking some bread. And here's our finished product. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs>